Boulder, Colorado, one of the most picturesque locations in the world, let alone for college football, and you will see plenty of Buffaloes roaming here. What a showdown we have in store. A couple of Big 12 teams squaring off in what could prove to be a huge game. As we'll see, the Baylor Bears taking on the Colorado Buffaloes. For EA Sports College Football, Reese Davis with you alongside David Pollock and Jesse Palmer. And guys, can't wait to get this one started. will put it away to start the game. Looking for an alley from inside his own 10. Couldn't find a way to create that broken field as he stopped at the 25. So the Colorado Buffaloes offense will start this game off. And here's the man they rally around, and he has earned that type of respect, David. You dang right. You earn it by doing it, and he's done it at such a high level. Everyone believes in this young man, and Palmer, there's a reason why. You're right, David. He's been in the big moments, and he's won the big games. This guy delivers when the game is on the line. Yeah, and I like the shot and the aggressive play down the field. We like throwing those jump balls up to my receiver, because usually the receiver makes the play and makes the defender look bad. Nice job by the defender getting a hand on it tipping that ball away from the wide receiver after the incompletion it's second and ten from their own 25 give to the back didn't get much done on that run he'll fight his way out and maybe maybe pick up a young man that back had absolutely nowhere to run the football actually is he counting I think he's counting to make sure there's only 11 guys on defense and the Buffaloes come to the line in the hurry up. Back to throw, it's Sanders. Right down the middle. Got his man! He'll have enough for the first down, and they stop him at the 45. This dude is just exceptional in every facet. So fluid, such a great route runner, and a big play there. And money down, third down, fine. I mean, you want to find that matchup because he's going to win. And gets a good release, gets down the field. You see, his that's your playmaker, that's your guy. Get it to him, get the first down. Going to run it. It's Hayden. And how about the efficiency on that one? It'll bring up second and four. Coaches always harp about staying ahead of the chains. And when you can run with that type of efficiency on first down, man, you are doing just that. Got six on first down. Now a lot of options on second and four. He's looking to throw. Grabbed in the middle. It's Horn. And the defense makes the immediate tackle, but he has enough for the first down. One of the most difficult things about this slot receiver is his shiftiness and his athleticism. He's very, very difficult to tackle after the catch. The Buffaloes are moving quickly down the field. Coming out on first down with the play fake. A shot toward the end zone. And it's caught! Touchdown, Bucks! A lot of times you see those receivers, as soon as they get by the DBs, you know, the hand goes straight up in the air. I got him. I got a step on him. He got a step on him. And the ball was thrown perfectly out in front. You can see he runs underneath it, gets it, and gets the long touchdown on the go route. Lining up to tack one more onto that lead. And he's got the extra point, and it's 7-0 to start this one. So that was a six-play, 75-yard drive. And the finisher coming on that 42-yard touchdown toss. The kickoff team out there and ready to go. He'll bring it out. It's Cameron. Rolling the dice to bring it out of the end zone did not work out as he stopped at the 13. So Baylor's offense has the ball for the first time. 
Here are our impact players for this game, and it goes beyond executing an assignment to make an impact in the game. Yeah, obviously we were talking to both coaching staffs this week, and we asked them who needs to step up and play well. They immediately pointed to these guys right here. They are the key for their respective teams. Yeah, and they don't always show up in the box score, but these are the guys that are the leaders. These are the guys getting everybody organized and have to play well for their team to succeed. Six-yard pickup on first down. Leaves him with second and four. On the option. He'll toss it. And he has run out of bounds as they go backwards there and just avoided the contact. Man, the defense had that one completely bottled up, and he eventually just had to live to find another play. Yeah, I love the discipline on defense, too. Everybody where they're supposed to be. Everybody staying in the gap. So they just kept funneling the ball to the outside. Inevitably, that guy had nowhere to go. Dropping back, it's Robertson. And the pressure gets him back at the eight-yard line. They'll tell you that somebody's always going to pop open, but it didn't happen in time before they got the sack. No, it did not. And you know what? I'm going to remember this. I'm going to remember zone defense. They didn't really have an answer. They weren't ready to get rid of the football. Quarterback hesitated. I got to him and got him on the ground. Might be a good call later on in the game. The Bears send out the punt unit. Three and out. They got stuck in reverse. They hope the punt can bail them out. He just wanted to get it out of there from his end zone. He only needs a sliver of daylight. And the coverage team able to wrestle him down. Colorado has the ball back, and the Buffaloes hoping to put their team in prime position on offense. They unleashed an aerial assault last time that took them right to the end zone, David. So, Reese, with that drive, I think you've accomplished something you wanted to accomplish. Make this defense think. You put them back on their heels. Now, shoot, Palmer, you might be able to slip a few runs in on this drive to really jack them up. Yeah, I like that idea, but I also like the fact that speed kills. And they've got it at the receiver position, so if you've got one-on-one -on -one matchups, man, take advantage. They'll go right back to it. And a good, solid pickup for the defense cuts him down. And as an offense, having success on a run play like that early in the game just opens up all the possibilities of your playbook moving forward. Play action, running the ball, throwing the ball, screens, anything is at your disposal at this point. And the Buffaloes want to pick up the tempo. They'll run the option. They tried to go smash mouth on third and short, and it did not work against this defense. And the Buffaloes line up to punt it away. He ought to be able to use his first punt to pin him deep. The punt goes out of bounds and a nice job to get them backed up. I think they'll spot it right around the 15. Here comes the Baylor offense back onto the field. Going up top on first down. That's caught. It's Hawkins. And he runs through one tackle and picks up a few. I'll tell you, for this defense, they're going to have to find a way to brack the slot receiver because of how athletic he is. They're going to need to make sure they've got linebackers and DBs surrounding this guy at all times. Trying to get a rhythm in the passing game. Now on second down. Looking for space. It's Reese. He's knocked down in the backfield. He'll lose a couple. Well, the offensive line had everybody blocked except the defensive end. He was able to sneak into the backfield and get the tackle for him. So third and short from inside the 20. You convert here, and this drive takes on a different complexion. They're trying to slow that rush down with the draw. Tough, hard-nosed running. He got three, but he needed four. It's fourth down and one. got great speed they'll wrap him up and bring him down and that's how we'll wrap up the first quarter guys Colorado has the lead here we played one before we move on let's have a look at the stats lots 
minutes of time left, and we're ready to get back to it and open the second period. And the Colorado offense is coming back onto the field. From the gun, they'll try to impose their running game. He makes the stop at the 48. That'll be enough for a first down and a pickup of 10. All right, well, look, I know the defense was feeling real good about their run D coming into this one and how they've been playing up to this point, but finally, David, the offense breaks through and they finally generate something positive on the ground. And I can't tell you how easy it is. When you're going to throw the ball consistently, and I know it, I'm going to pin my ears back and I'm going to get to the quarterback. It makes life really easy on a defensive line. But when you can have balance, now the defense doesn't know what's coming. They need more of this if they're going to be successful on offense. He'll work his way down to the 28. It is so good for an offense early in the game to get in a rhythm and to start stringing first downs together. It makes the game really easy and puts that defense in a situation where they're starting to get tired. They want to sub. They want to get other guys on the field. Stringing first downs together like this makes it hard to defend. The running back has it. Knocked down after a gain of one to the 27. And offenses want to continue to feature the run. They want balance. Even if it's not super successful, you can take it a little bit at a time just to keep that defense honest. The Buffaloes are in the hurry up. Looking for a physical attack from the gun. He's just outside the 20-yard line, stopped at the 21 after a pickup of six. Just a simple power play. Again, not sexy. Run the ball up the middle. Physicality, offensive line gets to assert themselves, run block, which they love to do. This pays dividends down the road in the fourth quarter. Already in chip shot field goal range at the 21, but this third and short, they're still thinking touchdown. Looking for a man, it's Sanders. Unloads to the wideout. Makes the grab. They get him stopped at the two, but it'll be first and goal. And they just want to give this guy a chance to make a play on third down. And more times than not, he is going to deliver. And he's so good, so efficient, such a good route runner. Got the speed, got the complete game. So you definitely want to highlight him, and especially on those downs that matter the most. If something's not open quick underneath, find him. He'll make those contested catches. And he's sprinting. He'll take it all the way. Touchdown, Colorado. Touchdown puts them up by at least two scores. Too early to say it's over? Probably, but boy, it's starting to feel that way. It might not be over, but you're in trouble, and you better find some answers really, really quickly. This team is putting everything together, and right now you got nothing going. Come on, give me something. They'll try to add another to their lead. And with the extra point, they pushed the lead out a little further. So that scoring drive took only six plays and finished the deal with the short touchdown run from the two. The kickoff unit about to go to work. On the move from inside is five. Nice job executing all of the assignments as they put a stop to that return at the 22. Baylor has it back, and here comes the Bear offense. They've stumbled a little bit out of the gate here, Jesse, finding themselves down by two scores. Yeah, and their defense needs to help them out and get off the field, get them some more possessions. This offense didn't spend a lot of time on the field in the first quarter. David, I think they got to run the ball here and try to establish some rhythm. They got to establish something, and you're right. You'll wear your defense out. Continue. You keep getting the football back to them, to the other offense. You're wearing your defense out, and you'll have no shot to get back in this game. Back to throw. It's Robertson. It's complete on the right side, and he's able to bounce off one tackle for a solid pickup. Well, we knew coming into this game, this offense was going to try and get this receiver involved and get him involved early. So here they are just finding an easy completion. It's not a touchdown, but they just want to get this guy lathered up and get him in the middle. And the Bears moving quickly to the line. Wants to throw on third down. Fires to the wideout. All kinds of room to throw that one in there. He's run out of bounds, but a big play on that one, and it'll be a first down. 
And you just wonder now, is that the play that's finally going to wake this offense up? They've been sluggish throughout the entire first half, but could that be the thing that finally just gives them a little bit of a jolt and leads them to scoring some points here before this half is over? Running back searching for a hole. Hole down after a pickup of five, but they knocked that defense back, and they've got it down to the 34. We've reached a two-minute warning, and this thing has been one-sided, and they hope to at least have something to feel good about going into halftime. They'll line up for a second down play. He's looking to throw. Snagged in the middle. It's Baldwin. And he was just a couple of steps away from taking that one even further after the catch. That was a nice pickup running the drag route and finding that quiet, soft spot in the zone. Yeah, drag routes not only work against man coverage, they work against zone, too. If you can find the soft spot and the quarterback gets it to him early, he can turn up field, and you saw that right there. Caught in the backfield, it's Richardson. Finally run out bounds but he has this offense rolling with a first down you know it's funny I know running backs oftentimes are afterthoughts when it comes to the passing game but when you think about it this guy's been making people miss his entire life taking handoffs so why wouldn't you try to get him involved in the passing game as well you just saw in that last play how dangerous he is after the catch looking to throw it's Robertson and he dropped it just didn't look the thing all the way in tell you, you got to have great timing on these out routes. And the QB and receiver had that. Quarterback put it right out in front of him. Receiver's just got to be able to make the play. Defense rolls up deep in its own end on that last play. Now a second and long coming. He's looking to throw. Makes the catch. And he's wrestled to the ground. When you run your slant route and it's against man-to-man, -man, one thing you know you're going to get is hit. When that wide receiver catches the football, slants don't open up wide open. Linebackers are going to be there. Safeties are going to be there. So you got to be able to take that hit and hold on to that football. Huge play in the red zone. Third and goal coming up. Pushes ahead. Into the end zone he goes. Touchdown, Bay! And I love the physicality of this offense. It's third and goal. It's money time. I've got to be more physical than you. And that's exactly what this offense just did. Put the ball on the ground and put it in the end zone. Ready to try the point after. And after the extra point, they cut the lead in half, down 14-7. 76 yards on the drive for the touchdown, and they finish it off with a short plunge into the end zone. So they got the touchdown, and as they kick off, really important for the defense to shut them down here. From inside the 10, here he comes. Not a lot of space to be found. Good hustle by the coverage team, and they stop him at the 21. Colorado has the ball back, and the Buffaloes hoping to put their team in prime position on offense. Dropping back, it's Sanders trying to get to it. And the quarterback caught up to and sacked at the 12. The defense coming up big there. The sack is great, but the secondary deserves some credit, too. No doubt. When you can cover like that in the secondary and drop back in your zone and only rush a few and you feel comfortable getting home and they're going to get to the quarterback, that is a great feeling, and that's fun to be a defensive coordinator calling the plays. So they'll try to salvage this drive on second and long from the 12. The give to the tailback. They make the stop, but not before he takes a chunk out of what they need to move the sticks. we got a timeout here late in the first half, and they'll try to get more points on the board before the break. Under a minute to play here in the first half, and the offense will take a knee, and that is how we'll wrap up the first half. And back to the guys more than a mile above sea level at Folsom Field. And the Buffaloes will kick it away to start the second half. 
Fielded in the end zone. It's Bell. And the return man has no place to run, no place to hide, and a place to be tackled. Here comes the Baylor offense back onto the field. If they're going to get on top in this game, they're going to have to find a way to get the running game going in the second half. I agree, so it can create some more balance, some more unpredictability. I feel like this defense has got a good beat on what they're doing, especially if they don't mix it up a little bit. So I do look for a little second half running the football palm right of this group. And I think the thing, Dave, is they just got to be more physical. I don't think this is a scheme question about trying different run plays. I think it's up to the big fellas up front. They've just got to make the decision that they're going to be tougher here in the second half so that they can win this game. To the air, it's Robertson. He makes the grab. And the defense able to drag him down, but not before. They'll recycle that down marker. I just love quarterbacks that aren't greedy and that aren't always trying to throw the home run ball, right? Second down, you're in your own end of the field. The guy you want to throw to is not open. Just find the bat. He'll go do something positive with it. This guy is a weapon, and you got to find him in the passing game. Looking for room. It's Reese. Defense not budging. He's still able to get two to the 29. And sticking to the run. I'll tell you what, a lot of teams that are really good are really stubborn, and they continue to run the football even with little success. So this offense is going to continue to focus on running the football. You can tell. The Bears headed quickly to the line. On second down, he'll let it fly. Grabbed in the backfield, it's Hawkins. And maybe he'll get back to the line of scrimmage, but no more than that. Yeah, nice job by the defense. That's what you're supposed to do. As soon as they catch the football, you want to limit that yards after the catch. He went nowhere after the catch. Nice job by the defense. Balls at the 29. Defense can taste getting off the field. It's third and long. From the gun, wants to pass. Looking down the middle. Got him downfield. And an explosive play has him on the move, and he gets it all the way to the 48-yard line. Well, look, that wasn't a touchdown, but that was a massive play for this offense. They needed some momentum. They needed to find a rhythm, and what better way than converting on third down? Awesome job by the quarterback getting through his progression. Looking downfield, it's Robertson. Quickly complete. And he goes out of bounds after a nice pickup on that one. I really like the slot receiver, and I understand he's not the biggest guy in the world, but he just runs really good routes, and he's always under control. He can run option routes. He can run double moves. He does a great job cutting, and he's dangerous after the catch. Nice weapon to have work in the middle of the field. He'll keep it himself. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. And I think everybody wants to run the option nowadays, but the problem is, can everybody read it? You gotta be able to stick the ball in the belly to run it back, and you have to be able to understand or I'm pitching it to him. Whatever the read is, you can tell he was a little bit confused, a little bit slow. And that's why the defense won this round. They line up with some serious work to do if they want to convert this one. On third and long, try to convert through the air. Fires to the big fella. Really confident throw and catch there. Big pickup, and they have a first down. Ever since they invented the forward pass, the tight ends have been running the drag and getting the first down. I think it's because the tight ends, it's so much versatility. You know, they can block and stay in the formation, or they can release and come out. But either way, if the quarterback's patient, most of the time, that drag route's going to come over. Takes the handoff. It's Reese. And he brought one tackle on the way to a solid pick up there. And as an offensive coordinator, you don't need the perfect play with this guy as your running back. He's going to make the play perfect for you because he makes everybody miss. Spin moves, hurdles, stiff arms, speed, whatever it takes to move the sticks and score touchdowns. And the Bears will hustle to the line. He'll try to pop the draw. Finds just enough room to pick up a couple down to the 26. Third and 
inch short from the 26. Pretty easy field goal range, but they'd love to pick up the first. They'll try to run for it. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. Defense is about firing off in the offensive guys and staying in their gaps. Everybody knowing where they're supposed to be. You could tell the defense, everyone was right where they're supposed to be. Nowhere to run. It's wise not to be too greedy, and they'll go ahead and send out the field goal unit. And they'll kick it from the left side, a 44-yard try. And the kicker delivers the three ball to finish off the drive. So they were able to put up a three spot on that last drive, and now the kickoff team out there as they prepare to put boot to leather. From inside his own 10, let's see what he gets. Buys just enough space to cross the 25. Let's mark it at the 27-yard line. And the Colorado offense is coming back onto the field, keeping it on the ground with the single back. Great pickup as they'll keep this drive moving, and they've got it at the 45. Who says you can't run up the middle anymore, right? Everybody thinks, I got to make big plays. I got to go way out to the left, way out to the right, way out in space. Nope, right down the middle. Nice blocking. How about the running back? You could tell the speed, the wheels, does a great job getting down the field, making a huge rushing play. They're going to ride this running back. And brought down, looks as if that's how we'll end the third. Guys, Colorado has the lead here. Three quarters are in the books. Time becomes a factor, both in trying to hold the lead or cut into it as we take a look at the stats. Not only is the scoreboard on their side, but so too is time as we open the fourth. It's a draw. Slam to the ground, but not before he gets the first down. It's a point in the game, I think, as a coaching staff, where you really challenge your offensive line to go win the football game, right? We've got to lead late. We're going to run the football. And the defense and everybody in the stadium knows that's what's going to happen. Can we run the ball down their throats and impose our will? That's what this offense right now is trying to do. They'll switch it up here and look to throw. Good job to toss that ball out of bounds and avoid the loss. They'll try again on second down after the incompletion. And off from the shotgun. One step wrap, two step squeeze. This junior knows how to get him on the ground. And the Buffaloes want to move quickly. On third down, he drops the throw. Let's it fly. He's got it. What a nice connection. Knocked down immediately, and they've got it at the 25. And they did everything right in this four-minute type situation, trying to bleed the clock. First you get the completion, then you get the first down, and you stay in bounds. You could not execute that play any better. The Buffaloes will line it up on first and ten. And off to the single back. Finally stopped at the 20-yard line after a pickup of six. Man, that's the advantage of having a good coaching staff to teach these players in this type of situation with the lead late in the game. You want to stay in the field of play and keep the clock ticking. They do that after that nice run. This offense could not have executed in this situation any better, just draining some time off the clock. To the air, it's Sanders. Coming after it. 
That pass is incomplete, and they're probably fortunate that it wasn't knocked free for a fumble. Well, the offensive line has got to give him at least a little bit of time to survey the field. He had no chance that time getting hit almost immediately after he got the ball. A manageable distance on third down as they try to convert from the 20. From the gun, wants to pass. He's got it! He'll be stopped just short of the end zone, but they'll have it first and goal. And you just get the feeling that this defense has to find a way to get off the field and get the football back at this juncture of the game, trailing late if they're going to win. So this offense with an opportunity to put this game in a hammerlock if they can score and bleed the clock. And this was just a low man wins battle right on the doorstep of the goal line, and the defense comes up with the stop. And this is where the offense just breathes. Just take your time, huddle up. I'm in absolutely no hurry. I got the lead. I want to continue to run that clock. No false starts, no penalties. Let that clock tick down and then punch it in the end zone to add to this lead. Looking for a path to the end zone to the right. Going right back to the well, and this time he finds water. Gets it into the end zone for the touchdown. And what a push up front by this offensive line. Everyone playing in unison, driving out of their stance, working into the second level, hats on hats, creating a lane for that running back. Lining up to tack one more onto that lead. And the extra point is up and good, and they have an 11-point fourth quarter lead. They put together a 74-yard touchdown drive, and they capped it off with a one-yard plunge. Almost ready to kick it away after scoring the touchdown. Here he comes from inside his own five. Didn't find any crease in that kickoff coverage, and he'll be stopped at the 17. Baylor has it back, and here comes the Bear offense. They're going to have to be more aggressive in this drive. You can't expect to win this one, David, kicking field goals. No, especially when you're trailing. you got to have a little more urgency and maybe a little more aggressiveness, Jesse, and field goals are not going to get it done down the stretch. Yeah, you're going to have to take some shots, no doubt. Bottom line, when plays present themselves, you've just simply got to make them. The Bears racing to the line in the hurry up. Looking for a man. It's Robertson. He's right on target. That's the kind of play that can really get you going as they get it out to the 36. We've reached the two minute warning, and we see miracles in college football all of the time and they could use one here. They'll snap it from the 36. They've got a first down. He's gonna pass. Got it in the middle, it's Johnson. They got him free for a big gainer down to the 43. I don't know who on defense is gonna cover this guy. Honestly, he could be a problem for this defense over the middle of the field in the passing game. Clock is still running, and they have to get everybody lined up. Looking to throw it again. Got it in the middle. It's Hawkins. And they pick up just a few on that completion. And a really nice job by the wide receiver. You run a drag route, find space. They're in zone coverage. They're not covering man-to-man. -man. Find a little hole. Look at that QB. Y'all get on the same page. You could tell they were, and that's why they got the first down. The hurry up now. Second down. Clock ticking. He's looking to throw. He wants to take the top off. And that's going to fall to the ground incomplete. That was a physical matchup there. Third down coming. Uh, missed opportunity on offense. QB and receiver just not on the same page there. Couldn't find his man last time. And that leaves him with a third and six. 
from the gun, wants to pass. And a missed opportunity on third down as the defense knocks it free, and fourth down is coming up. Got to give the defense credit on that play, taking everything away, forcing the incompletion. Now it's decision time. Fourth and short in your infield goal range. What do you do here? So they're going to send out the field goal unit to try a long one. He says he's got a big leg. He's going to have to show it from 56 yards out. No good. After the missed field goal, still down by 11. and the Buffaloes hoping to put their team in prime position on offense. Now the chance to take a knee and just put the finishing touches on this victory. Yeah, and this offense has done their job, man. They've been so productive, built the lead. Listen, their defense has pulled their weight as well, but now, Jesse, you get to exhale, you get to breathe, and you know we got the W, and we played well. And we got to think about where we're taking our girlfriend and parents for dinner, right? What side are we ordering with our giant stake. We've earned it in this game. Now it's time to go celebrate. They stop him just short of the first down, but it will be second and inches coming up. A quick timeout called by the defense, stopping the clock to save as much time as possible for their offense. Here they come on second down, trying to put this game away. Takes the handoff. It's Welsh. They get him on the ground, but not before he gets enough for the first down. Defense uses a timeout quickly, trying to get that ball back and preserve time for their offense. Running out the clock, a mere formality between them and a victory as we have victory formation coming. 